In this video, I'll be talking about RO and RC circuits dealing with impedance. And impedance is shown as Z. And the way that I like to think about it is it's another form of resistance. But resistance we have to have as positive or slowing the flow of a current. And in this case, with um, impedance, with inductors or capacitors, we have to think about it differently since it could be shown as negative or since there is J's involved for showing imaginary numbers. So that's why it's labeled as Z. And we, so I'm going to talk about these two points first. To think of impedance, think about a form of resistance. We don't show it as R, but it's the same thing that we would think about for R with resistors or it's a V over I, okay? But now, what this comes from is the same V over I equation would be used for inductors and capacitors, but now the way that we find voltage and current with inductors and capacitors is a much longer equation. So it's basically the same V over I is where we get it from, but it's very long, over a very long equation so that's why we simplify it, and these are the three equations that we need to know for circuits. So first, for inductors, we have J L times omega. That is the imaginary J, then the inductance times omega, or for capacitors is negative J over omega times capacitance. So the way that you find impedance is you plug any number such that you're given as Henry's or Farad's. So you're gonna plug those in for your L or your C. You apply your J, that you can always apply J. And you should be given your omega or your frequency somewhere to be able to find that last part of your equation. Then what you're gonna do, all you're gonna do is rewrite these as a form of impedance or so that they're all in the same impedance or type of resistance so that you can deal with them then. So looking at this, if I'm given five ohms, that's already given, we're gonna think about Z is five. Then for this one, I gave you guys omega as 10, but for inductance and the impedance of a five Henry inductor, we're gonna think about it as J five times 10, which would be J 50 equals Z. Then the same thing for capacitors, we're gonna think about it as negative J mega 10 times five. So we're gonna think about it as negative J over 50. And that would be the Z for capacitors. So that's how you find the impedance for every single one of these, apply these same equations. But how you actually deal with these or how you often have to incorporate these is in parallel or in series with other uh, forms of impedance. So looking at this, we deal with impedance, once again, the same that we would res with resistance. So we can put them in series or we can put them in parallel with each other. So if we have this circuit, for example, then we have our 20 resistor and our five uh, Henry inductor. First, we would have to change this inductor to impedance. This is already an impedance. We have to add those together. Then we would have something like this it's easier to draw it as a box since we don't know what form it is in anymore, but we're just thinking about it as impedance. So this goes to a box, and we're gonna to have to combine the impedances of these. So we're gonna call this Z of A. And that we do through those equations, adding them. Next, we have this box in parallel with this two farad capacitor. We have to use this equation to change our capacitance of two to our impedance. So right here, we change 
these two together, and then we're left with another capacitor in our box over here. Then we have to combine these two again. There would be in series. So the main point that I was trying to show out of this is that impedance we deal with similarly to resistance as far as being in parallel or in series. You add them all together if they're in series or if they're in parallel with two things, you can do the same thing. The first times the second divided by the divided by the first plus the second. I'll write that equation out for you guys again. Times Z2 over Z1 plus Z2. That's the same equation that we'd use for two resistors in parallel, and we can do the same thing for impedance. So, kind of in conclusion, impedance, very similar to resistance. These are the three equations that you need to know if they apply to C, I, or R. Think of them as a form of resistance, and then we apply them in series or in parallel the same way that we would with resistance, through this parallel equation or by adding them.